Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Let's Draw! This week's episode was drawn by me, Aqua. Um, this is another one of the getting to know episodes because Corzette did one last week and I wanted to do one too and I said I would be doing Seth but I did not because I was drawing, I'm like, I don't know what to draw, so I drew a picture of Anti, because I'm about to do a doll repaint of him, and I ended up drawing this, so today we're going to get to know Anti. Uh, Anti's name is, like, it's a nickname. His real name is Marketos. He has a twin brother. His twin brother's name is Marketos. Basically, his twin looks just like him because he's a twin, except for he has blonde hair that fades to pink, and he's not as pale or emo looking. He's cute. Yep, and yep, he's Cupid. Uh, Anti is the Anti Cupid, and that's where his nickname comes from. Uh, so him and his brother, they're they're twins, and it's Cupid and the Anti Cupid. Um, Anti has a weird story behind him, but I guess I'm going to go mostly into his design story first. Uh, originally, Anti was... Originally, yeah. He was just this character that I kind of thought of, and I had no idea what I really wanted him to look like, until I was watching Adventure Time, and uh, then okay. there's the male version... Well, yeah, then there's Marshall Lee, the female version of Marceline. Man, those names are so weird to say back to back. No, I did not. Okay. Marceline. Okay. And then Marshall Lee. So I took Marshall Lee's design and looked at some fan art, and then I got Anti's design. And But his personality and a lot of things were way too similar to another character that we already have, and that character's name is Sai. So after a few changes and a few things thinking about, oh, I want to look like this, eventually, well, all of my characters, after I do a few Get to Know You episodes, you'll see uh, that they are all based off of different stereotypes. And Anti, anti is based off of emo stereotypes. So he has the piercings all over his face, and he's really pale, he has dark skin, I mean light skin. <laughs> he has really pale skin, he has really dark hair with some neon colors on him. Uh, and he likes lots of belts and bracelets and things, so he's based off of emo stereotypes. Pretty much, you mix together Marshall Lee, yeah, I'm saying Marshall Lee, and then you put a whole bunch of emo stuff in it, and then you get anti, along with a while of drawing things, until it starts to look different. Um, this is whenever I have problems drawing the nose. I just cannot draw a nose from this angle, but I want it to be different. Eventually, I gave up and drew a nose the other way. But, uh, that's pretty much where Anti's design came from. So, Anti's story itself is, uh, it, it's my attempt at doing a, a, writing a love story. I'm using quotation marks around the word love. Um, pretty, yeah, you can't see the quotation marks, but pretty much he, um, uh, pretty, pretty much he's, he's kind of, he's kind of old. You know, his mother, it, his mother is Aphrodite, and his father is Ares. I know that they are related people, but Greek mythology has incest all the way through it. But no, they're in my story, in they're not. Story. Yeah, they're not related. They're just they're just people that fell in love and have kids. The Cupid and anti Cupid, and these people uh, pretty much uh, Cupid. Oh, whoops, sorry, anti Cupid or anti uh, falls in love with this girl, and um, and this girl, which we'll figure out, is Seth. But to put the story a little bit shorter. Uh, it's a long time ago, and it's in a time where it's just like, you're around 13-ish or something like that. It's time for you to get married, kind of thing. Yeah. So the guy's just like, so Anti's like, yeah, we're, we're of that age, it's perfectly okay for me to ask to marry you. And of course, I know that usually it was a much older guy with a younger woman, and that's how it normally worked. I don't know if, like, two people that were, like, teenagers would get married back then. I'm not entirely sure. I just know that the proposal would not be completely out of nowhere considering how young they were it wouldn't be out of nowhere because it was kind of a little bit more okay to get married younger then but they he i think it's all 16 and oh, okay. it's different depending on what state slash country you're yeah. in but um so he asks he's pretty much just like will you marry me and she's like oh my goodness and um she's she, she's like no i'm not ready for that man so she says no and uh he's kind of like Oh, I'm, I'm I'm really heartbroken, and along with him being the anti-Cupid, 
his uh, he accidentally curses her and uh, so she's basically now at this point incapable of love until she can admit that she truly loves him and he and pretty much that went really bad the uh, girl's family was just like nope <laughs> nah so they uh, they sealed him away for like years and years and years <coughs> Then he's saved by his brother. Yep. Cupid comes and breaks him out of the seal. Uh, unfortunately, because the type of seal it was, and because of the girl's family, which so such mean people. Uh, all effects that, like, pretty much years upon years of basically being stuck in one place, no light, not much of anything, um, uh, no food and anything like that. Cause he was just in a seal, just stuck somewhere and not being able to do anything, just, just stuck there forever. And he can't really die while he's in the seal either. So he gets out of the seal and pretty much all these effects are just take onto his body. So he's extremely pale, he's really thin, and he has really long hair. His hair fades to pink just because I thought it was kind of fun to think about love and pink and then it just kind of fades. So they, so he has all those effects, and that's why Anti is such a thin, pale guy. And also it works on the um, emo aspect of him, going, oh, it's a really pale, pale skinny guy, and emo. And you're like, yeah, that, that totally works out. Also, you, you should explain what a um, anti-cupid is in your story, and what a cupid is in your story. Oh, uh, there, uh, there's only one cupid, and there's only one anti-cupid, though there are people that work do for work, work for them, and... <laughs> They are called love ninjas, or or loathe ninjas. ninjas. <laughs> um, so pretty much the main people, Cupid and anti Cupid, do exactly what it sounds like. Cupid can pretty much shoot the little arrows or things and influence people, so people can naturally find the, true love. their true loves. And anti can do the same thing, but the opposite: uh, break people up they're and force love. their not true loves and force them to find their differences. Uh, their abilities cannot break what is um, what would be considered as a soulmate, person that you were meant to be with. So if you like, if you're with this person and it's been like great and beautiful, so you guys are not soulmates. Anti Cupid could break you guys up, even though there's nothing really keeping you guys apart. He could do something to point out flaws in you guys and make you guys suddenly go, oh, I I realize maybe I'm not meant to be with this person. And then Cupid can kind of change your path and make sure you'll end up with the person you were meant to be with. So they can do things like that. The love ninjas and loathe ninjas can do the same thing, but they're a little bit more traditional with being invisible and shooting arrows at people and making them realize these things. And it would be like sudden burst of like these feelings going, I suddenly have doubt, I don't feel like this person's the one for me, or I suddenly have this feeling that I know this person was meant for me. Um, the way their powers are different from Aphrodite's abilities, Aphrodite's abilities can mess with, yeah, just no rules. Basically, you guys can be meant for each other and everything, but she can make you fall in love with that random person down the street, even though that other person was your true love. It, it doesn't, um, matter. Yeah, it, yeah, her, her abilities just kind of break everything, because, you know, she's, she's Aphrodite. She can just do what she, do wants. What she wants. Um... Her, since her husband is like the god of war, uh, his abilities, I don't know, I feel like they work more with like conflict. So it'd be kind of cool to be like, oh, he could totally make anyone he wants. Basically, they, they, they can fight, they can get mad at each other, they can hate each other, and he can do that. And it also doesn't matter at all your relation. He can just make you angry at each other. Just, uh, so pretty much that's a quick rundown of Anti's background story, a little bit of insight about a few other characters, his parents, his twin brother, and uh, the love of his life, which we will learn about in, I hope, the next Getting to Know You episode. Uh, not the next, the next one that I do. Uh, the next one that I do. We should probably title these under the playlist, Getting to Know. Because I kind of like getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, since it's pretty much finished about Anti's history, I can talk about the picture. Finally! This is a really basic headshot kind of thing where you have the shoulders in there. Uh, drawing fa hair that fades is kind of weird. But pretty much, if you would have 
watched what I did. I colored in everything but one color, and then, which I used black, shine, shadowed the black. And then I got the airbrush tool, and then I airbrushed on the other color up to the point where Anti's hair starts to fade, and then I pretty much shade the pink in through the airbrush and the smudging and everything else. And then I get the textured brushes and keep swiping and moving until the black and the pink look like they fade onto each other. Because his hair fades to that color. It's not like a sudden line fade. His eyebrows do the same thing. Uh, his eyes are just regular pink. I mean, that's how I color eyes, guys. Pink hearts. Mm -hmm. Yep, hearts for pupils. Also, um, um, he looks sick. I mean, he does. I did kind of lighten up the pink color. I just want to put some pink color on there. I think in general, if you put pink on the nose and stuff, it makes people look sick or like they've been crying. I'm like, a he's an emo. He's overly emotional about everything. He probably gets out of bed and he's like, The bird songs are so beautiful. I don't think <laughs> he would do that. Just to like, Maybe. Yeah. And then I also gave it a little bit of a blur effect to some areas, make the eyes look like they're glowing. I just like when eyes look like they're glowing. Gave him some pink jewelry. Had to look up some pictures of piercings and such to do this part. Um, reference. Yep. Reference. Yeah. The background, I really love the way the background turned out in this picture. That is my favorite thing. I just played around with the add tool and drew a heart and it was really pretty. I didn't record that part because I never record backgrounds, or I don't think I do. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. I think we're almost to the end of this week's episode. We are! Well, thank you for watching this week's episode of Let's, Let's Draw. Draw! Please remember to like and subscribe, or else I'll send the anti Cupid after you. Well, I feel like I thought we were doing that's a good thing. See, I'm helping you this week. Bye! Bye bye!